Right, Flash Part 2, or Lesson 2, be a few of them. Now, we're going to start, unfortunately, with a change in the curriculum. Normally, I was going to be outside, pouring rain. And since I was going to use a model in a very tight white dress, well, you know what happens in the rain with tight dresses. So, I didn't want to put you through that experience. So, we're going to work inside this morning and leave that shot for later. We're going to start with a little bit of practical and then move on to a little theoretical. Now the practical, as you see, will be to convince you that you do need off-camera flash and the theoretical will be about what one you should buy because as we're going into more and more lessons, of course, you're going to have to buy flash, aren't you, to keep up with it. So we'll see which one you need. Anyway, we'll get on with all that and we'll see how we get on. Now for this part, I've painted the background a little bit darker, a little bit warmer. And now we'll pan around and see our subject. There we are. And we pan around and you'll see where the camera is. So we'll take a picture with a pop-up flash. Forgot to say smile. Well, that gives quite a horrible result. Look at that reflection coming straight back to you. Now I've put on a Canon Speedlight, it's the 580EX2, and we'll see what that does. Now, of course, with that, it's exactly the same. Well, it's a little better, but virtually the same. Well, I think that shows us that uh, having a, a lamp or a light on the camera just gives that horrible frontal light with a shadow at the back not very nice. Now, we can improve it with an off-camera flash or a strobe by adding things like this, and that's a modifier, but there'll be a whole lesson on modifiers, so I won't get any more into that at the moment. What I'll show you is how I can improve the lighting on a subject like that by getting the off-camera flash off the camera. So I'm gonna move around to the side and we'll just have a look at that, and then we'll have a look at that quickly, but then we'll get on to what type of flash do you need to buy. So what else are we going to need? We've got our flash, but we're going to need some sort of stand. Working outside or inside makes no difference, but it can be a very cheap stand. Now, I would recommend, if I may say so, something that has some sort of buffer. In just in case it comes down, it puts less, less shock on doesn't actually cost any more. They do pneumatic ones, pneumatic ones. They go up and down as well. So we've got our, our stand. You can get those, oh, so cheaply, it's ridiculous. So we've got our stand. Then you need something to put on the stand that will hold the flash. Now these are readily available and not very expensive. I would recommend getting a decent one. And then what happens is, the flash can sit in that shoe and you can also put a second one and a third one if you really want a lot of power. So, let's have a look how that fits on. Simple. And then we put our flash in there. It just fits very simply into a little slot that goes there. And now we've got it all set up as we want it. Now I'm going to put it in place, I haven't uh, done any tests on this yet, so I'm going to put it on place around, in place about here. Just like that we'll see. Couldn't be easier. I've got a nice bit of light coming through there, it should reflect the light back into the lens and it should give us an interesting picture. Now I might want to put it there, I might want to put it right back there, I might even bring it round to here. Working with one light, of course, is simple. You do what you like. Now, I'm just going to connect it in the simplest way to make it fire because there are so many ways, as I said in the last lesson, I'm going to go simple to start. I've got the flash in place. I've turned off a bit of light because if not, it will dominate the flash. So I've got the flash in, in place. I've linked it with a cable, so that makes it manual. So I'm really guessing the exposure at the moment, and we'll just take a picture and we'll have a look. Go a nice flash. Now it's a little bit dark. Let's go a little bit lighter. Um, 
There we go, we'll have to stop. 106 litres per second, don't forget. This one, the Canon, 160 per second for this sink, maximum 200, but I think with the Nikon you can go to 250. There, yeah, that's better. Now let's have a look on the computer. Well, there it is, out the camera. All you have to do is imagine that I can move that light in 360 degrees around the subject and each time get a totally different result. Now, if you don't prefer it, don't buy a flash. But if you do, let's talk about what sort of flash you should buy. Well, I suppose one of the most important things when you're choosing a flash is to know about different flashes. So, that's the only way you can choose, isn't it? Well, we're going to start with ETTL. ETTL is a system that the flash will use to talk to the camera. And the camera will talk back to the flash. ETTL means that the flash, and this is with Canon ETTL, means that the flash sends a little pre-flash out, you can hardly see them, so fast and so tiny and it will judge how long it takes for the light to get back and at what intensity. So it tells the flash what exposure to give. Now of course on something black it will receive less light back so it'll give more exposure. Now this works fine, perfect, uh, apart from one thing. If you're shooting a wedding for example, bridesmaid or bride walks across the image and someone in black walks next to her, the flash really doesn't know. So you will get this difference between exposure with ETTL. What about ETTL2? Whoa, that's a bit more sophisticated. Now ETTL2, which is the new Canon version, very simply not only talks to the camera, but it talks to the lens. It gets more information. It's a bit like they all get together and the lens says, Hi Flash, I've just got the autofocus and the autofocus tells me that I'm 10 feet away from the subject. And the camera will say, Oh, don't forget Mr Flash, I am set at F4. And then the Flash will say, Oh, I've got to put, then I've got to put my power on a third of power and give out this much light because there's someone in black walking across the image. Or you might say, got to give this much because there's someone in white. So that can get confused as well. It's the same thing. Now, what about ITTL? Well, ITTL is the Nikon version. That's exactly the same. Now, there's one other thing the camera has to bring to the board meeting, and that's the speed, the ISO speed of the camera. Because, of course, that all that increases and decreases the exposure. So f-stop ISO distance the lenses from the subject and the distance the camera uh, the flashes from the subject all that goes into this melting pot takes a tiny fraction of a second to work out and bang out goes your flash right exposure. I'm going to get into trouble unless I tell you what ETTL stands for. Evaluative through the lens. It's really getting the exposure that comes through the lens like a through the lens exposure meter. ITTL, internal through the lens, I really don't know. Now I've been told on several occasions that I oversimplify things and I don't give enough information. Now this being a very difficult subject, ETTL, um, what I'd like you to do is have a look at some other videos about ETTL, understand it very, very well, have another go through mine, and on the next lesson, we'll continue about flashes. Now, that'll be very quickly. That'll, that'll happen very quickly. Uh, most of it's already made. I just wanted to stop here because I think 10 minutes is probably uh, a good attention span, particularly when nothing's happening. It's just me talking. So, see you soon. Cheers.